When someone talks about the ultimate driving machine, it usually only means one thing, BMW. And if they're like me, it means a BMW with an M at the end of it. However, not every person wants to drive their daily commute like they're driving the fastest lap at Circuit of the Americas. And this is made even more prevalent by the fact that alternative fuels and the electric element is coming into the industry faster than ever. So with that in mind, can you still get the ultimate driving machine that's still luxurious, that's even more more fuel efficient, but still has that performance-based attitude? Well, we're gonna find out today. Thanks to our friends here at BMW of Houston North, we're gonna give you a full-on walkthrough of the 2021 BMW 330e. Now, if you're going to talk BMW, the most obvious place to start is with performance, and the G80 330e definitely delivers on that front. You open the hood, and what you're greeted with is a combination of a 2-liter twin-power turbo, direct-injected four-cylinder engine, making 181 horsepower, combined with an onboard high-voltage electronic motor, and a 12-kilowatt-hour lithium-ion battery cell, making up BMW's E-Drive system. Now, while the gas engine itself makes 181 horsepower, the E-Drive adds an extra 107. The end result is 288 combined system horsepower and 310 foot-pounds of nearly seamless torque. Again, the E-Drive system adds the torque fill for this engine where a gas motor might stumble a little bit under acceleration. Now, this powertrain is available in either the X-Drive all-wheel drive system or in rear-wheel drive like I have here, and either way, you also get an 8 speed Steptronic automatic transmission with the paddle shift manual mode. Now, as it sits here in its rear wheel drive configuration, you're looking at 28 miles per gallon combined city and highway or a 75 mile per gallon electric equivalent when using the full hybrid mode. Now, just because it's a little bit more green doesn't mean it's not performance capable. This car will do zero to 60 in 5.6 seconds, despite the fact it weighs almost 4,050 pounds. In terms of the 3 Series' styling with this G80 chassis, as they call it now, this car has not strayed too far from the original 3 Series formula from several decades ago, and you can really see it in every angle. First off, this example here is finished in the optional mineral white metallic, and this one also comes with the upgraded convenience package thrown in as well. The convenience package starts off with full LED headlights in the front with the optimal cornering lenses, so you get LED turn signals, LED high and low beams, and your LED daytime running lights as well. And these, of course, sit astride the satin chrome-laced twin kidney grills, which are a little bit smaller compared to the newer ones on the M3 and M4, but then again, this car is about aerodynamics and efficiency. Speaking of, we have the active grill shutters inside of those twin kidney grills, again, aiding in the aerodynamics and this car's 75 mile per gallon electric equivalent. And as you look down below, you have the active air skirts, which go through the front corners of the bumper and then exit right out here, just in front of the front wheels. And as you look a little bit lower, you also have a little bit more air intakes down there along the bottom and running through the middle of the bumper, front and rear, we also have BMW's active park assist as well. From a side profile, the 3 Series still demonstrates the opulence of a true compact sports sedan. With a sizable hood up front housing your turbocharged E-Drive system, a medium-sized greenhouse in the middle, and of course the short deck lid at the back with sizable cargo space. Now overall length is 185.7 inches from nose to tail, which puts it about on par with most of the sport compact sedans in this segment. Now, even though it's not as obvious with a lighter color like this mineral white, the 3 Series for 2020 
2021 is very curvaceous. There are a lot of body lines that you'll notice, maybe in perhaps a darker color or even something a little bit crazier like the Portimao blue. You'll notice things like the curves in the hood. You have a beautiful belt line that runs pretty much from arch to arch and one that kind of connects with the rear tail lights. And then you have the beautiful curving swoosh that goes along the rocker panels down below. Now, if you wanna talk about some size and style, take a look down here because this example is wearing the optional Style 793i 19 by eight inch bi-color aluminum alloy wheels. Bi-color in referring to the fact that it has the machine face in front and the orbit gray colored accents on the inside. These are wrapped in 225 40 series run flat tires. And underneath we have the typical things like four wheel disc brakes with the BMW energy recuperation system, i.e. regenerative brakes. And we have a pretty interesting suspension setup. Here at the front, we have a double pivot type front suspension with a five link multi link suspension hiding out back. Down the side, the 330E differentiates itself a little bit more from its gas powered stable mates with the addition of the charge door here on the driver's side fender. Now you can charge this regularly like a 110 volt or go something a little higher like a 220 or 240. And you can also see it has the charging light indicator on the inside as well. And once you lock the vehicle, just like the gas door on the passenger side, that door will lock itself as well, meaning that nobody can just simply open the door and start charging your car at random. Now, as you come even further down the side, we have a lot of things like body colored side view mirrors with the indicator uh, or the LED indicator along the side. These are power folding. Now you can either do that via a switch near the window switch controls, or you can do it using the comfort access keyless access system, which comes equipped when you get the convenience package. Now, as you can see, we have the standard BMW key here. We have unlock, the BMW logo is locked, trunk, panic, and the releasable keyblade out of the bottom, just in case of emergencies. Right now, the car is locked, as you can see, and you can also see there is a little ridge pattern here on the inside of the door handle. That is how you lock the car. If you wanna unlock it, however, you just grab the door handle, and now it's unlocked for you. From a rearward perspective, the G chassis 3 series definitely carries over a lot of genetics from the outgoing F chassis. For example, you have the steep rake on the back windshield that trails off into the short deck lid here. And you can also see a little bit of it in the styling of the rear end. We have full LED taillights here with your LED uh, main taillight here, your turn signals and reversing lights. Of course, you have the E on the end of the 330 badge to let people know you're driving the more efficient 3 series. Of course, we have the government mandated backup camera hidden here just underneath the uh, BMW logo. And of course, as you trail down to the bottom, as you can see, you have the rear half of the park distance control system that I was mentioning earlier. And even further down, you can see we have a twin chrome tipped dual exhaust. Even though the 3 Series is not the biggest sedan in BMW's lineup, it still is quite the practical one at the same time. When you open the trunk, first of all, it rises gently on the gas-powered struts, and it reveals a very sizable 13.2 cubic feet of cargo space, which, as you can see, in this case, houses things like your carpeted floor mats, which are not yet installed on this vehicle. We also have the BMW charging system, which you can plug into your wall at home. And more importantly, as you can see, we now have a fully foldable 40-20-40 split back seat. In BMWs of previous that had a E-Drive or hybrid system, the batteries would be located somewhere behind the back seats there, but now this is a more usable plug-in hybrid with the battery being located under the floor of the car. In addition to the brightness of the mineral white exterior on this car, we take a look inside and we are greeted in this case by the Canberra Beige Sensatec upholstered interior. Now this is not the full leather interior. If you want that, you can go for the premium package or higher. And of course that will include the contrast stitch. But for a sub $50,000 sports sedan, this interior is absolutely beautiful and very driver focused as you'll see. You come down here, we have power adjustments for both front seats. This particular 
particular one only gets the driver side lumbar support and the driver side bolster adjustments as well. You come over to the door down below, you have the gas door release and trunk release. And not to mention you come over here and not only do you have the satin aluminum trim, which in this case also houses the optional ambient lighting, but you have all the typical controls you'd expect. You have all your mirror controls, including the button to fold them in manually, two person memory adjustments for the driver's seat, all four automatic windows and window locks. When you take a seat inside the new 3 Series, first of all, as much as the exterior has been redesigned in the pursuit of improving the 3 Series aerodynamically and design-wise even more, inside you feel almost like you're driving something with the dashboard of a fighter jet. First of all, look at this. We have a 12-inch digital gauge cluster and a 12-inch touchscreen infotainment system, part of BMW's new live cockpit system featuring their iDrive 7.0. But before we get to all that technology, let's just admire the simple details. First of all, a three-spoke sport-designed leather trim steering wheel. The, the leather here is nice and supple. Big grip extensions up here at about 10 and 2. And instead of a million buttons all over the top two spokes, everything is very simply laid out. First of all, most of the controls we have over here are for the natural voice recognition, the source function, which shows up on the right-hand side of the live cockpit uh, gauge cluster, Bluetooth functions, you also have the source scroll wheel, again for part of the live cockpit system, and the volume function as well. And you come over here and all of these buttons are for your cruise control system. And not to mention we also have the paddle shifters hidden here on the back to really make the best use of the 8-speed Steptronic transmission. Now you can also manually tilt and telescope the steering column thanks to the latch hidden underneath. And as you come over here to the side, you also have all of the buttons for that full LED lighting system, including your parking lights down below, your headlight off, automatic, and turning the headlights on. So now it's time to talk live cockpit, and we start with the over 12-inch digital gauge cluster. Right now, this car is sitting in hybrid mode, so over here on the right, we have the power meter with the recharging function. We have the battery life over here, or range over on the right. We also have the navigation and other functions you can display here in the middle, and we also have the speedometer over here on the left with speed limit recognition, and you also have your fuel gauge over there on the far left. Now, if you want to turn this thing into the ultimate driving machine, you can just engage sport mode. Now the gauges suddenly turn bright red. You still have the battery life and your fuel gauge over there. Same thing with your speedometer and speed limit recognition and all that stuff. But now, as you can see over here on the right, it has turned into a nearly 7,000 RPM full-size tachometer. Now the sport mode doesn't just stop with the cool gauge cluster. It actually gives you something extra called extra boost, which gives you a 10 second extra jolt of electric power to really get you off the line and get you to that 5.6 second zero to 60 time. You can also change other bits of information within the tachometer slash power meter itself by pushing the BC button on the side of the left indicator stock. You push that in, you can go from everything like active fuel economy, total distance driven, you can see your horsepower and torque numbers, you can even bring up a G meter. You can go through just about everything in here, but most people I think will leave it on the active fuel economy because that's really the name of the game with the 330E. Now, whereas the gauge cluster in this live cockpit system is very impressive, the real piece de resistance of the live cockpit system is this, the high color 12 inch touchscreen BMW iDrive infotainment display. Like I said, this is BMW's iDrive 7, their newest update to their iDrive system that first came about all the way back in the mid 2000s. Now you did just hear me say one key thing, which is that this system is now touchscreen. In a lot of previous systems to now, you would have had to use the iDrive control station with all of the buttons you see here and the click wheel and push button to select everything. But now you don't have to do any of that. This is a full touch screen system in a very very clear resolution now before we get into all the cool stuff that it has let's just go over the basics you have the media function which is Spotify AM FM radio Sirius XM satellite radio and so on you have Bluetooth uh, communications including syncing your contact book syncing your mobile devices and BMW assist as well you can continue on you have a navigation system which starts off as a small screen but if you want it a little bit bigger just swipe to the left take that split screen away 
And as you can see, it now blows up full screen across the entire system. But really my favorite part of the entire thing is when you go into car. You can literally do everything in here from setting up driver profiles, making notes, pretty much anything you want. But my favorite thing is the writing system. And I'm just using the digital owner's manual here as an example. You go into keyword search. And uh, let's say I wanna figure out something about the ABS system. I can either touch where it says ABS up here, or I can just write the letter A across the top of the iDrive wheel. As we continue on into the system, you also have the apps setting where we have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which is pretty standard on a lot of vehicles these days. BMW takes it a step further, however, because now Android Auto and Apple CarPlay both are wireless. You can sync your phone with Android Auto without ever having to plug in a cable or anything. It just blows it up straight up here onto the display itself. As we get a little bit further into the system, the cool part about the iDrive is that you have up to 10 different widgets that you can actually integrate into the system itself. And like I said, it's pretty much like a smartphone. You have everything from active weather and news to just your time and date. You can do your compass, driving data, local traffic conditions with active traffic updates. Like I said, navigation, media, Bluetooth communications. I mean, the list goes on and on. So we've gone back into the car menu for just a second because this system is so intuitive, you can actually pre-save any widget you want as a shortcut, kind of like creating a shortcut on a computer desktop. So I'm gonna go into driving information for just a second. And we, as you can see, we have three or four different tabs we can pick from. We have trip data, sport displays, which allow you things such as a G-meter, horsepower and torque, uh, your turbo pressure and oil temperature. But let's say we want um, energy flow. So you can see right now, it gives you a full dynamic outlook of the car. You have your motor, transmission, battery cell, and which way the power is going. But let's say you want to shortcut this. You don't wanna to have to go through all the menus and everything just to get to it. You see these preset keys down here. You've got eight of them down along by the radio controls. Let's say I wanna put it on uh, number six. I just push and hold number six. Of course, with all the high-tech stuff within the iDrive system, there are still some other basic functions in there as well, such as the backup camera. Now, as you can see, we do have the backup camera display here with the guidance lines and also the parking distance sensors. As you can see, there's a uh, X5 parked right here, but we also have the park distance control map over here on the right as well. And of course, that not only gives you a visual representation, but an audio uh, audible representation as well. Now, in conjunction with the live cockpit, you also get the personal assistant within the system. And I'm going to use the climate controls down here, this beautiful dual zone system, to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Let's say, for example, it's a little too cold in here. I've got the temperature set all the way down, as low as it can go. And all I have to say is, hey, BMW, I'm too cold. No problem. I'm raising the temperature and activating the seat heating. It will be warmer shortly. How cool is that? As you come down lower into this beautiful fine wood grain trimmed center console, we get to a couple of little extras, like for example, an onboard wireless charger. That is an option in most cases on the 330E. However, in this car, as you can see, we have it equipped and it is doing a beautiful job of charging my Samsung Galaxy S9. We come back a little bit further once we close this, and this is really the most button laden area you'll really see throughout the entire car. First of all, we have this beautiful compact shifter here. Again, this car has an eight speed Steptronic automatic transmission. And like most BMW shifters, you simply put your foot on the brake, push on the lock button on the side, pull it all the way back towards you to put it in drive, push it all the way up from you to put it in reverse, pull it back just a hair to put it in neutral. Or if you put it in drive, you can knock it to the left, put it in manual mode, and you can either take control of the gears manually via the stick where you push up to go down a gear, pull back to go up a gear, or as I said earlier, you can go at it on the paddles as well. And if you wanna put it in park, just simply push the P button on the back of the shifter. 
In addition to the iDrive 7 controller down here, you do have an, a few other little goodies besides the shifter and the start button that we've been talking about a little bit. We have the traction control, we have the park distance control button that allows you to turn it on or off, as well as the battery control. Now this allows you to set a target charge that you want the battery to be at uh, for a certain amount of time. You also have your different drive modes. So as I said, we have sport mode with the extra boost function. You have hybrid, which either allows you a standard hybrid mode or the uh, Eco Pro mode, which kind of, in a lack of a better term, numbs everything down so you can actually uh, get that higher fuel economy rating. And you can even go all electric mode, assuming the battery charge is not too low. We also have things such as an auto brake hold down here. So if you turn that on, basically you can pull up to a stop in traffic, take your foot off of the brake pedal, and the car will stay still even while it's in drive. And you also have the electronic parking brake to finish it off. Now, even with the 3 Series' smaller size in comparison to something, say, a 5 Series, when you look in the back, you actually have quite a significant amount of room back here, even for people over 6 feet tall like myself. Now, if I take, it, take a step back here, the door frame is somewhat low, so you do have to duck your head ever so slightly. But once you actually shut the door, Keeping in mind, I'm sitting behind myself here, either that or the memory seat has gone all the way back. I do still have at least a sizable amount of room back here. As you can see, the rear of the seat is indented. I also have dual mat pockets back here as well. As I said, these seats are 40, 20, 40 split. I have a nice little cup holder back here with an armrest. I can push this, flip that open. I can fit my 20 ounce bottle of Coke back here with relative ease. And if I'm a little uncomfortable with the way the climate control is set up front, I also have a third zone back here with full automatic AC function, temperature control, and climate zone control as well, along with two USB-C charging points located down in the bottom. And with all that in mind, that now wraps up our full-on walkthrough of the all-new 2021 BMW 330e. First of all, I have to give a huge thank you and shout out once again to the friendly staff here at BMW of Houston North. They have been very kind, very professional, and very gracious in allowing us access to their inventory and allowing us to film their brand new plug-in hybrid version of BMW's quintessential four-door sports sedan. If you guys want to find out any more information about the dealership or their current inventory, new or pre-owned, I've provided all their contact information in the description box below. But if you guys have enjoyed this video or perhaps you learned something today, please give this video a thumbs up. And also while you're at it, hit the subscribe button down below because trust me, it does benefit the both of us in the end. But at the end of the day, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review and I'll see y'all next time. Take care, everybody. Stay safe.